Hey guys, Retrapper there, and today I'm going to show you how you can bypass compatibility checks when trying to upgrade Windows 11. So as you can see at the minute, this machine is on 23H2, and I've tried running the installer for 24H2, and it does not like that the CPU is not supported, as it does not support TPM 2.0 on this machine. So this installer has just been run from this ISO file that I have here that I have downloaded using the media creation tool. So to try to bypass the checks, we're first just going to open up reg edit. So if we open up the registry editor and we say yes, and then in the registry editor, if we come into local machine, then we come into system, then inside of system, if we open up setup, and then we click on the more setup folder here. So if we now right click on this folder and we then do new and dword 32 bit value and we need to turn this allow upgrades with unsupported TPM or CPU and then press enter. Then we need to change the value of it from zero to one. So if we double click on it and then change the value data to one and click OK. Hopefully now if I try to run the ISO again, so if I open it up and try to run the setup, and now hopefully at this part of the setup, it will now bypass the checks and we'll be able to carry on with the upgrade. And there you go, as you can see, it's got past the checks. Now, if that hasn't worked for you, the other method we're going to use is we're going to create a boot USB with Rufus. So for this, you're going to need a USB that you don't have any data on that you want, that you don't mind being wiped, so that it can then be used as a boot USB. So if I just go through that process with you in case this registry edit hasn't worked for you, so the first thing you want to do, if you haven't already, is you want to get your ISO file. So again, I got this with the media creation tool. So if we open this up, if you haven't already done that, all you have to do is run the media creation tool and then you accept the terms. Then you would click next. And then at this section here, you would select ISO file. Then you would click next and you would then select where you want the ISO file to be downloaded. And then you would carry on with the creation wizard. That will then download you the ISO file. Now I've renamed it to that. It isn't automatically named like that, but you can name it whatever you want as long as you have the ISO. Now, in addition to the ISO, you're going to want to have Rufus. So this is where you can get Rufus from, and all you would have to do is download the executable. So now with the USB plugged in that we want to turn into an installation USB, so at the minute I don't even have anything on it, but if you did, it would all get wiped when we create the installation USB. So again, don't have anything on it that you want. So if we run Rufus and we say yes, and then I'll say no to that. And then with our USB drive selected, so for me that is the D drive, you then want to click the select button and then select your ISO. So again, for me, that's in my downloads. And then you just need to let it scan the image. And then once it scanned the image, you then just want to click start. And you want to make sure the remove requirements box is checked up here, as if that's not checked, then the installer won't be able to bypass the checks when it tries to upgrade. So if we now click OK, now that that box is definitely checked, and then we say OK that we know the data on the USB is going to be wiped. And then we just let it create the installation USB. And there we go. Now it's finished creating the bootable USB. If we now come to this PC and open up the bootable USB, if we now try to run the setup file in here, it should bypass the checks if the previous registry edit didn't work for you. So if I click Next, and there you go. As you can see, it's got past the checks again. And this time I will just accept the terms. And then I will just let it check for updates. And now it's ready to install, so I will just click install and show that it does install. And there you go, it's now finished installing, and as you can see, I'm now on version 24H2, so it upgraded Windows 11 successfully. So guys, hopefully that worked for you. If you liked the video, don't forget the like button. If you just like to hit this like button, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you another time. Bye.